trying to say them get the ideas, but you know what I mean. <laughs> We're trying to think what the coaches are thinking, and then it's something completely different. <laughs> Here we go. Two teams with identical two and four records that haven't found the win column since mid-August have 90 minutes to get back on track. Ball is in motion in Finley Stadium. We are underway in the seventh match of the 2021 Nisa Fall Campaign for both of these sides. Wolfgang Prentice, the left back, tries the lofted ball. This San Diego team will play direct. They have an attacking style, despite the Scottish pedigree of their head coach, Scott Morrison, a former Aberdeen player, defender, who made his way over to the U.S. to play in the USL for Phoenix Rising. Some physicality early on. Sean Hofstadter on the back of Prentice called for a free kick. Yep, first foul of the game there, early on in less than a minute. As right. you look at how the formations have shaped out, Marcus Nagelstad leading the line alongside Sean Hofstadter, and typically we'll see Hofstadter drop back in a more withdrawn role, and he's one guy Peter Fuller has said, despite this recent run of form, he has been the consistent positive force. He absolutely has, and he's even when they're training and he's not on the, in playing in the games, they're still talking and training, they work together as a teammate. They do so much together as a team off the field that we don't see, and that's where the, the relationships begin and uh, helps them build relationships on the field. So uh, Chattanooga in the double dark blue tonight, and uh, San Diego in the white, easy to spot which one's which, no problems there. And rain's still coming down, we've got a nice evening, it's uh, high 70s, low humidity, but just lots of the steady rain. Shouldn't be any rain delays, just uh, no lightning or anything, just uh, steady nasty rain. Robertson, whipped in, far side, clipped away for the moment. Back with Shandon Wright, who has to spin away from the Chattanooga press. Little early pressure from Chattanooga there. Letting uh, San Diego know they're here. Prentice straight into the head of Richard Dixon. 1904 will take the throw in quickly. Head coach Scott Morrison talked about conceding early. This is a 1904 team that really got off to a nice start on the season. Wins against Maryland and Michigan at home in the first two matches. Scored five goals in both of those games. Since then, they've only found the back of the net a total of four times in the last four losses. Yeah, and that goal difference could make a difference in uh, when it comes to the end of the table at the end of the season in a couple of months' time. Don't forget, we've still got plenty of action. Lots of games, Chattanooga. And uh, playing all the way through to the end of, end of November. So the table is not finalized, but uh, it's starting to get shaping, and uh, we don't want we don't like the shape it's in right now. <laughs> it is unfamiliar territory for Chattanooga FC, isn't it? It is, absolutely. As a longtime fan, it's very unusual to be in this position. And uh, you get the odd blip and the odd game when things don't go your way, but a string of them like we've had, and it's not just home or away it's, it's a combination of both where it just hasn't clicked and uh, yeah unfamiliar territory here comes 1904 it's a free kick given and we may have at least the first talking to of the match from Zelyaskov. Juan Hernandez the Chattanooga captain in there Alec McKinley in the mix as well seeing which 1904 player that is slowly getting Pollard. to his feet. That's a pollen gone down. That was our player to watch before the game, the 30-year-old forward. A goal and an assist this season. It's been raining all day, Luke, so that field's going to be slick. There could be some people taking tumbles they're not planning on taking. Turf field as well just mm -hmm. adds to that dynamic. It does, it does. Finley Stadium's called out quite a lot of uh, players who visited and aren't used to the way the, the turf runs here. So Ozzy Ramos, the captain, stands over the ball. As 1904 tries to manufacture the first threat inside the first five minutes. Ramos will go for goal. And Reddington, no need to leave his feet. Team's going to reset here. See if they get their shape. Chattanooga over three uh, attackers up there against the four defenders from uh, San Diego. This portion of the game is brought to you by the Henry Lofts. Thank you for the Henry Lofts, your sponsorship. Hofstadter plays between Nagelstad and Kasak. 
Both teams coming off road losses. Chattanooga on the West Coast against LA Force, 3-1. 1904, a 4-2 loss at the hands of Michigan Stars. Great defending there from Richard Dixon, steaming in to dispossess Apollon. 50-50 ball, Jackson able to track it down, but Prentice able to get in between. And that's just thumped away by Austin Rogers. CFC moving quickly. Hernandez misjudges it, and here comes 1904. Surging ahead is Daydoon. Apollon cuts in on the left foot, gets the deflection, and yep. upcoming corner kick for 1904, presented by Chick-fil-A, eat more chicken. Nick Spielman getting away on that one, and the first corner kick of the game. Let's see how uh, San Diego have worked out their corner kick drills. Jerry Daydoon, the 20-year-old from Haiti. He'll provide the service. Low line drive ball in. And a whistle in the box. A little bit of physicality from the visiting side will give Chattanooga the free kick. A little bit of pushing and shoving there. Reddington with the goal kick. Been a tough few weeks for him. Saw a little bit of the bench as Chattanooga has given up five goals in the last two games. Looking to bounce back. Nelson tries the quick combo. Here comes CFC. First attack building and it's out for a corner. Nagelstad with the threat. It was closed off by Wright. And a Chick-fil-A corner kick on the right side of the field from where we sit in the Finley Stadium press box. Eighth minute, fairly open game so far. It has been, isn't it? It's moved up and down the field. No real great threats on goal just yet. It's still early, of course. Near posts, rising for the headers, Nagelstad. Cleared straight up and out. A little foul there. Pushing on Hernandez. Gives Chanuga a uh, interesting free kick. Not really scoring distance from this far out, but uh, something they've worked on. I'm sure we'll see if they even float in the box for an attack. Asak and Robertson directing traffic over the ball. Got to keep an eye on Jackson here. He's on the far side of the box. See if he breaks away from his marker. Hasn't scored since his brace and his debut against Maryland. Here he goes. It's lifted in. A floater. Nagelstad was on the far post. And it's a goal kick. Yep. Nothing comes of that in the end. Good defending from San Diego. Well, and that's been the focal point for 1904 mm -hmm. FC. And I know you know this. Simon, for a guy like Scott Morrison from Scotland, that's almost in the blood, right? It's in the M.O. of Scottish football. Oh, absolutely, football. absolutely. And it's something they've struggled with this season. It has. It's been, been one of their weak areas. And, yeah, in Scottish football, the defences are so key. And uh, they don't get anything up. It's like playing a bunch of terriers, and they'll just not quit. And uh, that's why Scottish football is so much fun to watch, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> the defenders do not give any quarter. <laughs> 40 appearances for Aberdeen, for Morrison in his playing career. The Scottish Premiership side, never been relegated from no, that league. Always the number three team in the league, Aberdeen, right. against Celtic and Rangers. <laughs> they're always there, and they're always threatening, and they're always good to watch. Chattanooga threatening now, down the left channel. Kasak delivers straight into Rodgers. Yeah, not the greatest cost, bit low down, and it's easy for the keeper to gather that one up. We'll see if the uh, the slick playing surface comes into contention here. Uh, the ball's still going to be wet and bouncing around. We'll see if we get any errors from that too tonight. Matthew Hurlow tries to direct it into the path of Apollon. And back and forth we go. 
Robertson slams the brakes. Switched by Dixon towards Kasak. That's a great ball right across to his feet. Russell has the overlapping run. Kasak opts to keep it on his right foot, gets the deflection, and it falls to the feet of Hofstadter. Meeting between the two, June 12th, this past summer, a 1-1 draw that CFC stole late, 89th minute here in this building. Ian McGrath with the header in the dying minutes. And in that game, the assist from Tate Robertson, too, that set McGrath up. That's why I'm warning to see what Tate does tonight, because that those assists can make so much difference. McKinley whips it in. Nagelstad was there. It's clipped out by Cutler. inside for Daydun. The crafty dummy by Ramos. Mm -hmm. Evading the pressure of McKinley, there's the first slip up that we see in mm -hmm. the 12th minute. Rainy night as it continues to come down. This is Prentice. Directed in, it stays on the ground from Lomelli. Russell cleans up. Ozzy Ramos. Say his name a lot this evening. A box-to-box -box player has played the majority of his career as a six, but this 1904 staff encouraging him to push forward. They believe he has the quality. And we'll see if he takes them up on that tonight in a hostile environment. Chested down, more slippage as Russell's able to pick it up with nothing but grass in front of him. And the ball is cut off by Cutler. Prentice. It'll be interesting when they bring on Cutler Coleman and they have a defender called Cutler. That's going to be really confusing later on. <laughs> We'll, we'll brace ourselves we'll for that. Bear with us if we get that happening. That'll be fun. San Diego really focusing on possession right now. They are waiting for that break to get a, a crack in the defense, Chattanooga defense and uh, being patient. They slowed things down too. They aren't uh, going out quite as fast as they were in the first 10 minutes. An incisive run by Apollon. Mm -hmm. Strong tried to pick him out. I'm seeing a Spielman and Dixon and Russell cutting out those long balls. They're ready for those to come in. They're reading them pretty well. Not letting the uh, San Diego attackers get much space there at all. Samura. What's the most significant impact of the rain on a night like this? A turf field. It's a nice night, but you feel it's going to continue to come down as you see the drops mm -hmm. on your screen come down in front of your camera. It drains well. Uh, this field certainly is, does drain well, but it's got a crown on it too, which a lot of players aren't used to. Part of, well, the Chattanooga players are used to that. San Diego up expecting the crown, so the ball's going to run away at the edges on the touch lines and the edges. Going to run away faster than they realise. Um, as we've seen a couple of slips already, it does stay slick down there, um, even when it's uh, half dry. So that can make a difference. If you've got tired legs and a slippery surface, it's not a good combination. Well, they say it rains less than 30 days a year in San Diego, California. This 1904 roster largely made up of local players. 
I'd certainly ride more than that in Chattanooga this year. That's for sure. What does the song say? It never rains in Southern California. <laughs> rains a whole lot in East Tennessee. It sure does. <laughs> That's why it stays green and lush. <laughs> now Chattanooga slowed things down a little bit too. I think both sides realize they can't go at this at 100 miles an hour. Nagelstad accelerates. Oh, Rogers punches it away. And it's a poised moment by the 26-year-old goalkeeper from Oregon. Herlow dispossessed. Backwards to Reddington. Chattanooga settles into some possession for Peter Fuller. It's been about staying disciplined in that possession, especially the middle third of the field. It was such a focal point in our broadcast two weeks ago before the loss to Detroit City. Turnovers in the middle third, and it certainly continued to be as Chattanooga trying to end a three-game losing skid. Yeah, that was a game definitely played in the middle third of the field. This one's a little more open, and uh, both teams are banging on the door each end. One two is too much for Kasak, but he's able to get it back in. Offside flag is up. Does force a diving save by Rogers. Won't matter. Nice bit of play there, but in the end, yeah, the flag's up, so it doesn't doesn't matter. Chandler is certainly showing San Diego what they can do and how threatening they can be. But uh, no results of all their hard work just yet. Nagelstad goes yeah. to the turf. Free kick is won by CFC. Referee having a few words with Ramos there. Okay. See that again. Yeah, there he goes. Tips him from behind. You can't do that, especially when the referee is 10 yards behind you. Ramos still causing a bit of confusion here. Trying to get too close and referee having to mark the 10 yards with the magic spray, which the rain's probably just washed away. Right, magic spray. <laughs> Be even more magical on a night like this. Absolutely. Ramos is a bit of gamesmanship there from Ramos. Trying to unsettle Chattanooga. Hernandez. Good long ball, but the keeper is up to it. Nice save there from Austin. Well, Rogers started the first three games of the season in goal for 1904. Two of them wins against Maryland and Michigan Stars to start the season. They made the switch to Alfredo Cortez after their first loss of the year at the hands of Detroit City. And after three starts by the 22-year-old, they've gone back to Austin Rogers. This is his first game back. Ramos gets head on that one, but uh, not dangerous at all. Glances it behind for a Chattanooga goal kick. This portion of the broadcast on 11 Sports is brought to you by Free Bets. So 20th minute, no score between two teams that have scored the exact same amount of goals on the season. The difference has been 1904 has allowed 15, Chattanooga has allowed nine. I think if it ends nil-nil, Lucas, both sides would be pretty disappointed because there should be three points for the taking here. No question, both coaches with three points on their mind tonight, and quite honestly, both teams looking to this match as a turning point in the fall season with several matches still to go mm -hmm. 
It's a huge opportunity for both sides here. Samura. Falls to De Dune. Wiggles out of a tackle. Deflection. Reddington has to punch it away. A little bit nervous moment for Chattanooga there. The clearance wasn't that great, and uh, San Diego took advantage of it. Now, here's McKinley. What's he going to do? Drops it off for Jackson. McKinley again. That's a nice ball. Near post ball and the shot on target from Hofstadter. Rogers does just enough. Back into play and oh. pokes straight into the chest oh. of Austin Rogers. Offside flag stayed down. Marcus Nagelstad got his right foot on it. What a chance that was. Where there was poke it one side of the keeper and went straight into his arms. But what a chance out of nothing from Chattanooga. Great play. Marcus Nagelstadt obviously is still very goal hungry. It was so encouraging for Peter Fuller to see him get that goal against Detroit City after coming in as a sub. It was his first action of the fall season. Assisted a goal on the team's most recent trip to California. But they'll look to him to find the back of the net on a night like this. Jackson will apply the pressure. Oh, referee calls that one. That was painful. Dallin Cutler going in behind. And more words from Alexander Zelyaskov. That did look a bit hard. Chattanooga player down. As 1904's captain Ozzy Ramos comes over for the explanation. A yellow card. Let's watch this again on the replay. That's a chop from behind. Only kicks him again when he's down. That's uh, that's what the yellow card's for. Number six, Cutler, picks up the first yellow of the game. Felt like there was one coming, didn't it? It did a little bit. Uh, I think... Uh, San Diego feeling the pressure on that one. If, yellow card, if you got foul vision, Kapman Wide and McGarvey Eye Care can help with that. A few words be exchanged between the players there and the referee. So it's Dallin Cutler on the receiving end of it, the 27 year old, another local player from San Diego. Part of this four man back line. Keep an eye on him during the next couple of plays, see if he uh, does anything else crazy. So, yeah, it was the actual, was it wasn't just the foul, it was kicking the player while it was down, was the yellow card. The player was Nagelstad, who was able to walk it off. They probably been told to watch out for Marcus, I'm sure. Keep an eye on him, so they may have assigned Cutler to be the one to shut him down. So, if he feels he's getting away from him, he's going to give him a little nibble on the back of the ankle and say, Hey, I'm here. Robertson to send it in. Another line drive swept away. De Dune turns away from Hernandez, wins the free kick right back for 1904 FC. So right now, both teams sort of cancel each other around a little bit, Lucas. It's like an attack, another attack, a foul, a foul. There's, you know, <laughs> a bit of balance going on here with this game. Robertson has to chase it down. Hurlow on the ball. We haven't said his name much, and he dribbles it over the goal line. Yeah, I was expecting to see a bit more on that Hurlow, I must admit. Was one player that Scott Morrison immediately brings up when you ask about mm -hmm. 
the players to watch in this 1904 attack. Herlo, 27-year-old from California, scored against Michigan Stars. Although one thing, when you look at this 1904 roster, nine goals scored on the season, Simon. Not one player mm -hmm. has more than one goal on the year. It's been very much a by committee approach. So it's been a, a team, a team game, which is what we expect. But no outstanding star. Most teams by now, this far into the season, have the outstanding scorer who's got three or four. That's a nice ball. Robertson has space. He takes it along the 18. Cuts in centrally. And a good sliding challenge by Samuel Strong. They missed him in his recent red card suspension. Have him back now along that back line. Oh, Herlo back, pokes it right into Reddington wow, who comes great, up with the save. Great save from Reddington. Gets his body right behind it. A great save from Herlo. But wow, what a bad back pass. And Herlo's there taking advantage of it. Well, we're going to talk about him now, Lucas. He's uh, <laughs> suddenly woken up. Caught Spielman out of position and a huge missed chance for Matthew Herlow. I think that's what we're going to see tonight is those those breaks where the ball doesn't go as they expect and suddenly they're exposed and could be on either team. And if the uh, the attack can take the advantage of that and complete and score the goal, then uh, that's where the goal is going to come, I think. McKinley allows CFC to reset. Richard Dixon. A bit too much on that one. Goes out for a goal kick. Scott Morrison, the coach for San Diego, very animated in his uh, in his box. Peter Fuller mainly sitting down most of the time. He's standing up now, but uh, most of the time he's been sitting down. Morrison, one of the younger coaches in this league, 37, not too far removed from his playing career. Mm -hmm was part of the inaugural Phoenix Rising team at the USL level. Captain that side. Lifted in for Apollon, he controls it well. Leaves for Lomelli. Quick passing from 1904 and Herlow had a chance oh. to put it on target and scuffs it. Again, some nice defending from Chattanooga, keeping the ball away from the, the direct shot, but the Hurlow had a good chance there to take a shot direct to Ruddington and uh, just, yeah, slipped away from it. Second time Matthew Hurlow's had the opportunity face to face with Alec Reddington, and second time Reddington has come up the winner. That time Hurlow made it easy on him. So San Diego is starting to turn the screw a little bit on this one. They are starting to get some shots together and some attacks. Chattanooga still really haven't had a, a solid attack on goal yet. Free kick Chattanooga's way in the center circle. Blasted across by Russell. Controlled by Robertson, who combines with Dixon. Tate Robertson. Gets free, whipped in, punched out. Chattanooga keeping it on the right side. Diagonal to Kasak. Lamelli heads it out for the throw in. Nearly half an hour gone in the first half. Zero still on the board. Sean Hofstadter bracing himself for the long throw. Nobody there but Dallin Cutler. Herlo beaten to it by Spielman. Robertson, Jackson, quickly right side to Nagelstad. He's dispossessed. It's a good tackle by Prentice. 
And now 1904 on the move with Jerry Daydoon. Samura. Ramos. Daydoon makes the run. Ramos didn't have the angle. Back with Sean Russell. Switch there, not quite what Russell wanted. And this is Wolfgang Prentice. Has time on the ball. Lomelli got a piece of that. And it ends up with Cutler. In 19.04, now stringing together some time in Chattanooga's half. Chattanooga's certainly giving San Diego plenty of space to move around. They're not really closing them down at this stage. Off the initial speed of the first 10, 20 minutes, that seems to have slowed down a little bit, and San Diego taking advantage of that. Able to focus on possession, at, uh, trying to get something going out of this. Both teams giving the ball away a little easily at the moment. Uh, some unforced errors when there's nobody really on them, and they're uh, giving the ball away. That's a nice... Defending, look at that, Richard Dixon. Herlow pestering Dixon, and Dixon called for the foul. They move quickly. Samura. Apollon presents himself. Central to Samura, and picked off by Jackson. Jackson's dropped back quite a way to get the ball. Usually he's not getting the service you would expect of the striker, so he's having to come back to get the ball. Covering a lot of ground, the 32-year-old. Absolutely. Now he's up there again. Chattanooga have the three up front. Robertson with a chance to uh, move the attack forward. McKinley. Sprayed to Kasak. Has plenty of space for the service. And it results in a Chattanooga corner kick presented by Chick-fil-A. Good chance to have Nugget to make something out of this. Try something a little different from the corner they haven't done before. They haven't converted on set pieces at the rate Peter Fuller would want in this fall season. Not what we've seen in the past, certainly. And again, San Diego able to defend that and push away. Chattanooga having to go back to the halfway line. Dixon. So important to have him back for Peter Fuller, like another coach on the field, mm -hmm. missed the game with a red card suspension after being dismissed from the Detroit City game two weeks ago. Herlow on the ball. Lomelli. Well, no goals yet. Scott Morrison talked about 1904 struggles and conceding within the first 30 minutes of matches. So if you're on the 1904 bench, certainly not displeased with the way this game has gone so far. Absolutely. You can check that off the, uh, the list of things they wanted to achieve tonight. Danger here posed by Chattanooga, and that's Kasak on target, saved by Rogers. Follow from Robertson oh, and wild shot. <laughs> head in hands as his that first time a, shot was yeah. well wide. That was a wild shot. He didn't have everybody on him. He could have uh, taken an extra touch. The ball bounced around in San Diego's area. They didn't really get control of it. Chattanooga not able to capitalize there. That would have been a great time to get the first goal. This portion of the broadcast on 11 Sports tonight brought to you by EPB Fiber Optics. 
Prentice has the space on the left flank. That's a nice ball. It's in for Apollon, oh. saved by the head of Reddington. Tried for the chip, and Reddington got away with that one just about, but Apollon going for the chip. Unable to beat Jackson to the goal line, and it's out for a goal kick. So back and forth opportunities. It, it, it remains scoreless, that, but game started to open up a little bit. That's exactly it, Lucas. It's uh, back and forth, and whichever team can take advantage of those strikes and uh, opportunities that come out of nowhere almost. And now is who can respond the fastest, whether it's the defending goalkeeper or the attackers. And at this stage, they're still fairly evenly matched. Ten minutes plus stoppage time before the half. You can almost feel a goal coming. We do. We but do. will it come before the break? Hofstadter pressing against Strong. That's Alexander Zelyaskov telling Daniel Jackson he can move down the line. Yeah, he needs to move down to the point where the ball crossed the line and exit the field of play to take the throw. Hofstadter will be the one to do it. So he'll get one of those long throws. He'll wind up here and uh, put it right in the middle of the box. Here it comes. Bodies in there. Clipped out. Follow from McKinley, rolls cleanly over the goal line. Yeah, not a great shot there. He scuffed it, it bounced off the turf instead of hitting it purely. The correction, it was Kasak on the follow-up. Again, the ball loose in the box for San Diego. No one able to take advantage of that and tuck it away. One of the Chattanooga strikers can get a boot on it and control that a little better. We'll have a goal, but uh, at this stage, not yet. Prentice. McKinley slides in. Doesn't give Herlo the opportunity. Russell. The Virginian, formerly of Forward Madison. Too long for Robertson on the near side on the pass from McKinley. Two other matchups happening around Nisa tonight, at least at the moment. New Amsterdam on the road at Maryland Bobcats, Stumptown at league leaders Detroit City and then later tonight at 10 Eastern kickoff it'll be Michigan Stars at Cal United get you updates on those as they come along whipped ball in Kasak falls to McKinley flicked on oh Nagelstad was there that was one touch away from being a great shot Erlo turns away from Spielman who's caught a bit out of place here but it's a good recovery by Richard Dixon excellent steal from Richard Dixon great play Ramos whistled, unhappy with it. 39th minute. No free kick given, it was a throw in. And now it's Chattanooga having the bulk of the ball. stop now so it does make it a little easier for the players because they're still probably soaking wet for the first half near a play but uh, no more rain coming down at this point the pitch may start to dry out as play goes on space for De Dune. he takes it swings it right side to Lomelli on the right foot Kasak blanketed on him and it's out for a Chick-fil-A corner kick for 1904. Eat more chicken. 40th minute in the first half. They go quickly here. 
And with the snap of a finger, Alec Reddington blinked, and he's got a goal kick. Sandio taking a shot there from a little too far out. Really to be dangerous. They feel like they can snap off a shot without getting that close to the goal. I think that's, they feel like the Chattanooga Rugby defence is keeping them away from the goal, so they're having to shoot from further out, which is a good sign that their mentality is we can't get close enough, we we'll have to shoot from here. Um, but as you can see, it didn't go very well, neither accurate nor powerful. Herlo watches that roll over the touchline. 1904 without a couple of a players that would impact the attack that did not make the trip. Lorenzo LaViolette, the 23-year-old who scored against Maryland. Not here. He's looked dangerous for this team at times, as well as Ernesto Espinoza, a guy that this staff really believes can come along in the final third. Chattanooga, meanwhile, does have Cameron Woodfin after a spell missed with injury. He returned off the bench against LA Force and might expect to see him again in the second half tonight, depending on what the game dictates. I think you're right though, Lucas. We're talking about before the broadcast and uh, we're expecting to see Cam get some playing time probably in the second half. Offside flag up. Just so you know, Chattanooga's bench tonight is uh, Cutler, Coleman, Cam Woodfin, Brian Beament, uh, Damon Rodriguez, Tofa Marshall, Ryan Marcano, and uh, we have backup goalkeeper, Mr. Nelson, the goalkeeper. We're looking to see him play very soon, we hope. No yes. Brett Jones either for Chattanooga. No, indeed, but a good, strong bench, nevertheless. Plenty of uh, attacking opportunities there. I think uh, Peter Fuller is keeping his powder dry right now until uh, he needs the, the firepower in the second half. Dixon. Kasak controls, dispossessed. Herlow could be a two-on-one here for 1904. Spielman closing in. Matthew Herlow leaves it. Reddington closes it down, and Chattanooga escapes. Good goalkeeping there in that situation. The, uh, the keeper coming out, Reddington making the second man. I'm going to put his body on the line for that one. Dangerous moment as Apollon was the man on the back side. Just not enough pace on that ball left by Herlow, and Reddington read it well. It's not the first time that Chattanooga have made a mistake in defense either and given them Herlo a chance to get in. That's something I think Coach Fuller will discuss in the locker room in the next five or six minutes when we go to half time. Typically it's been 1904 susceptible to those types of mistakes mm -hmm. this season, but it's been a relatively steady first 43 minutes from that back line. It has. It's, it's been pretty steady for both sides. Just those odd errors that uh, Chattanooga have given away and... Uh, Matt Hurlow not able to capitalize on this time, but how many chances are you going to give him? How many times are you going to do that? So, hopefully none. <laughs> 44th minute. Hofstadter closing in. Wins the ball back and sails it. Corner kick coming. They'll say it deflected off a 1904 defender. I believe it was Shandon Wright in there. And it's another Chick-fil-A corner kick for Chattanooga as we near halftime. Let's see if Chattanooga can make something happen just before they go into the half. This would be a perfect time to get a goal. Everybody coming up. Here comes your Apart from uh, Dixon and Russell, everybody else is up. No rush here from Tate Robertson. No, clearly not. <laughs> Plenty of bodies forward for CFC. Set piece has been a question mark on both ends all season. Mm -hmm. Could that be the difference here tonight? Looped in, punched out, and cleared away. Dixon on the opposite side of his starting position prevents the counter but there is a 1904 player down and in pain on the far side it is Ozzy Ramos the captain very critical player for this team 
box-to-box -box midfielder. They need his impact on both ends of the field. See what his status will be moving forward as we've played 45 and one minute of stoppage time has been given. Need more time for your business? Contact HHM for all of your accounting needs. Train is coming for a quick look as the Aussie Ryan wants to see how he's doing. We'll see that again. Let's see what happened there. Because it was pretty quick. Well? Again, one minute I'm not sure if somebody on him or not. Look at the replay. It's hard to tell from that. Like he's really down. But he's up and about now and he's okay. There's just being checked by the chatting with the medical staff. Make sure he's okay to come back on. Dying moments of the first 45. No score between these two teams in need of three points tonight. No question a draw would be a disappointing result for both coaches. Chattanooga eighth on the Nisa table. 1904 at ninth out of the ten teams in this fall season. Yep, a draw will make a lot of difference to the table at all tonight. The opportunity for three points to move one of these teams up to fifth in the live standings. Does 1904 have room for one more attack with over a minute gone by of stoppage time? That's what was given. Did have Ramos shaken up. And there's the whistle from Alexander Zelyaskov. That's it for the first half. Fairly evenly matched there, Lucas. Uh, not really the team able to get that break they needed uh, this evening, rather. And uh, hopefully we'll see some goals in the second half as Chattanooga gets underway. We've switched sides. Chattanooga wearing its dark blue, now attacking the goal to the left as we sit in the Finley Stadium press box in 1904. And it's road all white, moving left to right as they make the trip over from the West Coast. It's been quite a road trip for the visitors. A loss, 4-2 to two, at Michigan Stars most recently. That was six days ago. And they will head right back home to face this Chattanooga team in just a few days. Just an interesting dynamic there isn't when you that, play a team back-to-back. Yes. Back. yes, isn't that interesting? We'll have the, uh, the effects of the long flight and everything else that goes with it when we play them back at home in San Diego. I know they're looking forward to getting home. Of course, we're not looking forward to the road trip, but that's how it works in this league. We go all over the country because it's a national league. And as we were saying at the halftime about the expansion with the uh, team from Valley United from Arizona, I think it shows the confidence in the league and a lot of teams want to join NISA. They uh, have seen a good product with Chattanooga being one of the early adopters and uh, other teams are going, yeah, we want a piece of this. It's a good league to be in. They will make that trip a week from today for the rematch against 1904. And it's the visitors settling into some possession in the early moments here in the second half. You talked about passing in possession for mm -hmm. Chattanooga as the main thing that you want to see here in this second half. Who's the key cog in making that happen for CFC? The key cog's always Juan Ito. Juan Hernandez, uh, he, he plays such a captain's game all the time and keeps the midfield moving continually. So uh, I think he's the man to keep an eye on, as he has been over and over and over for so many years now. So, uh, but yeah, we want to see all the players just focus on keeping the ball when they pass it to look up and uh, make sure it's going for a Chattanooga player because there's been a lot of interception from San Diego they seem to be reading the ball better than we are and they're breaking up our attacks and Chattanooga doesn't seem to have something else to to change around to get around the back of the San Diego defense I think if they do they'll have a goal but they've got to get around the back of the San Diego defense first to make the shot <laughs> Early whistle here was a handball on Chattanooga, so a free kick about 35 yards away from Alec Reddington's net. No changes at halftime. I didn't see anybody change any players during the second half. The uh, Chattanooga subs are warming up, of course. Um, San Diego guys on the bench right now. Limited options for Scott Morrison and the visitors. Only five subs tonight. Well, that's it. And as we said earlier, we have yeah, midfielders and defenders. Ramos with a long-range attempt. It forced a diving save by Reddington. He didn't have to make contact, but it's a goal kick. That as Ozzy a... Ramos unleashed a left-footed strike that was to great... wake us up here in the early portion of the second half. That was a great strike from Ramos. 
shows that uh, they probably had a good talking to in the half, second half, and the, <laughs> the coach said, get on and get us a goal, and they, they're going for it. So. Well, this staff has encouraged him to be aggressive mm -hmm. in getting forward. His entire mm -hmm. career, he's been a six. He's used to being on that end of the field. That was certainly aggressive. That certainly was. From the 24-year-old captain. And here comes 1904 again. Rain has subsided slightly. A low drizzle coming down still at Finley Stadium. When the rain stops, it's good condition for soccer. It's, it's not too hot, not too humid, and it's uh, great for playing in. Near side. Lomelli has to track it to the corner and drop it off. This is Cutler nursing a yellow card. Yep, over everybody's heads and ready to gather that up. And uh, Chattanooga will get back into play in a moment when they've reset. This portion of the broadcast brought to you by HHM. Need more time for your business? Contact HHM. The opportunity is there as Maryland down 1-0 to New Amsterdam at the break. Maryland Bobcats six in the table at the moment on eight points. Of course, Chattanooga eighth tied in points with 19.04 with six. So a Maryland loss would allow either of these teams to jump the Bobcats for fifth. At least tied on points with Stumptown where Chattanooga does have the advantage on goal differential in the table. Delius Kava, our center referee tonight, barking out orders. Not sure what the explanation there's is a, here. There's a slight hold up here, but I'm not sure what they are doing it, trying to get a ball back so they can resume play. Chattanooga with a free kick near the halfway line. Spielman and Nagelstad creeping into the box. Hofstadters flick on to Jackson's off the mark. Dixon rockets it in the direction of James Kasak. As Hofstadter directs it into McKinley with and a big collision. A collision there. Yep. Called against Alec McKinley. And another 1904 player shaken up. Zelyaskov is immediately shouting for assistance as our 1904 players. Looks like we have, uh, I think they're applying the concussion rule there. Somebody's got a knock on the head that's put them out of action. Don't want to speculate as to who is lying with his back on the turf at Finley Stadium as he's looked at by the 1904 trainers. Let's see that again, see what happened. I think it was uh, just a two players just, yeah, going for the ball. Right. Ramos. It was Ozzy Ramos, the captain for 1904. It was Ramos, just both players going for the ball and not looking at each other. And the heads collided. So Ramos, he had a knock earlier, not on his head, but uh, had to be taken off and looked at. This one's a little more serious when they clash heads. Because uh, two young soccer players going at the ball, they go in at it. 100% and hit it hard. And if they hit a head rather than the ball, that's going to leave quite a mark. Let's see what's going on. It appears he's uh, getting checked by the trainer. I hope it's not too serious. Well, there's certainly an air of concern. There is. Yeah, that's... Down on the field right now. Ozzy Ramos, this team's captain. Extremely influential to this side. Saw him go down in the first half on a similar collision. Was able to get up and walk it off. And now more attention will be directed towards the midfielder from California. He had the first real moment of this second half with a thundering shot that forced Alec Reddington to dive and cover his right post. 
really has covered a lot of ground here in the first 52 minutes. Wishing all the best here to Ramos as he's getting looked at. Well, he is moving. He's not knocked out. And he's able to move around, but uh, I think the coaching staff want him to sit tight while they check everything over. So a slight delay there while this goes on. So what's the biggest difficulty in a moment like this when there's certainly concern around an influential player like Ramos, the team captain, as the yellow card has been given mm -hmm. to McKinley? Right. First one of the game given to Chattanooga. Yes, to Chattanooga. Okay, so yellow cards one apiece. But if you're Peter Fuller for Chattanooga or Scott Morrison for 1904, how do you kind of reel everybody in and try to light the fire under them once more once you do restart? Right. You just have to really tell the folks on the game plan you've got not to change it, not to panic and do something different. Uh, to uh, also keep an eye on how it affects San Diego if they change their plans or change their structure. If they have to replace Ramos, I'm not sure they're going to. They may have to change their shape a little bit. He's able to sit up now. He is. That's good. But I don't know if they'll take him off as a precaution or they'll, they'll let him carry on. That's the call for the medical staff to make rather than anybody else. Of course, the player will say, I'm fine, I can continue, they always do, but that doesn't mean they are. So he's up and about and he's walking, that's great. He gets a round of applause from the crowd in the stadium. Smatters of applause for Ozzy Ramos. Looks like he's, yeah, giving up the captain's armband. And he will leave here in the 55th minute. He will indeed, and a forced substitution going on. I think the uh, captain's armband going to number seven. Ashkenova Pollen getting the uh, captain's armband. Let's see who San Diego replace him with. Cutler, wishing him all the best. Let's see who's coming on at the second, the halfway line. It looks like 28 Schneider coming on to replace him. So Christian Schneider, a 25-year-old from Connecticut, one of the rare non-West Coasters on this roster. So a midfielder for a midfielder. Let's see if he has the same impact that Ramos has had in the first half. It's the first change of the game by either side and it's forced by injury as Ozzy Ramos leaves after the collision that resulted in a yellow card for Chattanooga's Alec McKinley. Still waiting on Schneider to make his way to midfield. Played his college soccer at Springfield College in Massachusetts. The all-time leader in assists there. Has yet to make a statistical impact on the 2021 fall season. But there's no question there's big shoes to fill. Here for the remainder of this game, replacing Ramos. There'll be a free kick to San Diego at the place where the, uh, the foul occurred. McKinley's standing off as well. He is, isn't he? It's a bit odd. Not sure why he's not back on the field. Don't know if maybe he was also looked at and had to come well, off for a quick look by the trainers, but that is why he's off as we get okay. word that he was well, looked at for concussion protocol as well, and McKinley good. comes right back in. And he's fine. I say it was more of, a, more of a collision than an intentional foul, but the referee didn't see it that way, and McKinley picks up his a rare yellow for him. Ball gets rolling again in this second half. That was about a three or four minute pause there. Mm -hmm. Be interesting what kind of impact that has after the 90 minutes are up and whatever the scoreline is in that moment between two teams that at this point, Simon just need to accelerate here. I think so. I think both teams did a little something different in the second half than they did in the first half to uh, get a result because they're kind of doing the same thing and they've, after this much time of play, nearly an hour's play has elapsed and they've certainly figured each other out. So it's time to try something different, change up with speed or pace or a different, a different tactic, change the number of attackers, change the midfield, and uh, find that little break that will lead to a goal. The rain's picked up a little more here after hitting a bit of a lull around halftime. 58th minute, no score. This is Apollon. His first touches after inheriting the captain's band from Ramos. Four, 
Lomelli. Shandon Wright. Cutler. It's been Detroit, or I'm sorry, San Diego with the majority of possession. At least so far in the second half. Detroit a long way away from here. Taking on Stumptown at the moment. <laughs> in the back of your mind, isn't it? Thinking what Detroit are doing. No. <laughs> well, it was the last time I was here. <laughs> right. Was that 2-1 loss to Detroit City. I'm always thinking what Detroit are doing too. Scoreless at the moment with Stumptown. So San Diego's chance to dominate this half. They've got all their players in Chattanooga's half. And their turn to turn on the pressure a bit. Hofstadter tangled up a little bit with Samura in midfield. Was able to win it back for Chattanooga. Saw an effort for 1904 trying to build out the back there. Chattanooga goes for the switch for Kasak. Was so dangerous in that opener against Stumptown, James mm -hmm. Kasak. Just an absolute terror down the left flank against Stumptown as that ball is too strong for him from Russell. Yeah, he certainly was. And uh, How do you gauge his impact since that opener, the 3-1 to one win? He's always there for the great crosses, and tonight, not as much. We haven't seen him in quite as much action, whether he's not getting the service or um, San Diego have figured out that he's the man to shut down, but uh, not as much action as usual from James Kasak. This diagonal ball towards him is covered well. And again, see, they're breaking those up. Each time they get the ball in, they know to cover Kasak and put a, a tall defender on him. Tried the one two with McKinley and it's out for a throw and had two assists in that game. Exactly. Against Stumptown. Yeah. He's picked it, up a third since then, but he was all over it in that first game. And uh, either teams have figured him out or uh, something's happened, he slowed down a little bit. But uh, yeah, the first couple of games he was like Mr. Dynamite. Having said that, if I was Coach Fuller, I'd still pick him every every game to start because he's just such a change maker in the game. Well, and he's done that. Absolutely. Left-footed wing back. Played as a forward and a left back in his time at Virginia Tech. Here he goes again. In the corner, Kasak. So he gets the service. Has to do it first time. It's great service teeing up a shot for Nagelstad. Now that's more like it. That's just wide for Chattanooga's first real threat of the second half. That's what we need to see from Chattanooga. More of that. Better service. And Margo should to get him on the end of the cross. And just as we say that, James Kasak with a pinpoint ball. Well, he must have heard us. That's fine. <laughs> we'll see that again. There's that cross. Margo can't get the connection. The ball was actually bouncing off the turf. He doesn't get a clean shot away. But uh, as soon as he does, it's going to be a lot of problems with the goalkeeper. It's like a free kick to San Diego. Jackson not happy about it. Chattanooga trying to harness that energy from the first shot on target since coming out of the locker room. It's not the reins back as well, Lucas, so uh, things will get a bit slippery again. Even on fouls, six apiece as Jackson pickpockets. Jackson driving through the defense there. Three or four players, one after the other. That's much better. So here comes Chattanooga. Numbers forward. Ten of the 11 outfield players in the 1904 half. Russell. Robertson. Tried to wait for the overlapping yeah. run. Yeah, Robertson needs support there and not getting it. Ran and out of gets time. dispossessed. Yeah, runs out of time and space. And that, that's something we keep seeing is whether it's communication or anticipation isn't right or uh, Chattanooga not getting those balls. Those are fairly straightforward overlaps to run for any attacker and, and midfielder. And uh, for some reason, they're not able to complete them. San Diego got a player down in the 18 yard box. Game slows down again, 63rd yeah. minute. 
1904, relatively new club, making its way to Chattanooga. Last time they were here was a 1-1 draw, snatched away late by CFC in the 89th minute. So train is on again. I mean, if somebody had a, a stumble, pulled muscle. We'll see. 1904 defender being looked at. I believe that's Dallin Cutler, and we'll confirm that as soon as we can. One of the more intriguing backgrounds of this club, the ownership group that initially founded it consists of two former Premier League stars, Demba Ba and Eden Hazard. Yeah, what a two players you wouldn't expect to be uh, over here in the States, both uh, famous for playing in Belgium. And yet they're investing in a club in the USA as a, as a seed, uh, seed money to get them off the ground. And they were instrumental in getting this club going. Not part of the ownership group anymore, but still have involvement. Ba actually just announced his retirement. That's right, he did, and he's been a great player. It's been a pleasure to watch him play over the years. Uh, that's Strong who got the uh, the knock. I think he's just bring his boot back on. on how Samuel the Strong. Out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's funny. They, you expect the players, you know, in the, in the the top leagues to be using their money for you know sports cars and the like. Actually, some of them are putting money back into seed projects and not uh, not bragging about it, just doing it quietly. And this is one of them, which is a great thing. A lot like Chattanooga, they want that local impact. They want local players involved. So many on the team sheet tonight, based out of San Diego. Mm -hmm. And after a great start, two wins and two matches right out the gate, they've dropped four in a row, trying to get back on track, as is Chattanooga after a three-game skit. McKinley. Flick on wasn't there. Yeah, from Robertson well, got the touch, but nobody behind him to take the ball. Quick throw. Jackson in behind the lines. I'll do it again. Yeah, anticipated well by the uh, San Diego defense. Sixty-five minutes still scoreless. This portion of the broadcast on Eleven Sports is brought to you by EPB Fiber Optics. Hofstadter. We'll launch it in. A signature long throw on its way. Jackson gets ahead on it. It's in oh. front of the goal, and it's was Good. actually Russell who flicked it across. Jackson was yep. right in front of Rogers, and it's out for a Chattanooga corner. Good reflex save there from Austin. That was... Uh, he had a nice game. It was good. I enjoyed watching that. It was a good good move. Finally, Chattanooga starting to get a, an attack in. <laughs> it's a Chick-fil-A corner kick. Eat more chicken. 66 minute. All right, let's push this one. This is going to float into the box. Whipped in. Rogers punches it up. Still bouncing around, and it's another Chattanooga corner kick. Chattanooga keeping the pressure on. This is much better from Chattanooga. Keeping uh, San Diego back in the 18-yard box, not letting them get out. Kasak will make his way over for the service. Nagelstad standing directly in front of Austin Rogers, the 1904 goalkeeper. Bounced out to Dixon. Tries to float it right back to Kasak. Offside oh. flag goes straight up. Good idea, but uh, Kasak was just offside there. But a nice series of events for Chattanooga. Felt yep. like the injury to Ramos. Certainly a turning point in mm -hmm. this game. The captain mm -hmm. really directs the pace of play in this 1904 midfield. Leaves and Chattanooga suddenly with a quick flurry. Absolutely, a little bit of pressure from Chattanooga there, a bit of sustained pressure and a lot of goal scoring chances. Looks good, that's a great ball, here comes Jackson. Rogers off his line, Daniel Jackson approaching, tries the right footed far post look. That was well wide. San Diego not able to clear that very well and Chattanooga getting a throw on the near side. That was a great chance for Jackson there to make something happen. Another Chattanooga throw. San Diego and they will clear away just yet. They've covered everything well so far in the back. This certainly doesn't look like a team that's allowed 15 goals so far. No, it does look a lot better. They probably focused on that in training. They're a lot more solid in defense than they were in other games. 
looking for Jackson once again. Rising high for the header is strong, but it falls back to Chattanooga with Kasak in the corner. McKinley. Let's see if McKinley can do a bit of magic. Heavy touch. He slides into it, and it's a free kick for 1904. That is Lamelli down. Another injury. Scott Morrison in the 1904 touch line in the ear of fourth official Ronald Ware. And McKinley is already on a yellow card. Just need to be going uh, anything else <laughs> in the foul area. Risking the chance for a second. And with only five on the bench to start the game, 1904 can't quite afford another player leaving due to injury as Lamelli is able to walk it off. 26 year old from Los Angeles. See that again, that slide. I think it was a sliding tackle, but uh, did make contact. Yeah, a little bit. Not sitting, wasn't going super fast when he, when he made contact. But Might be lucky not to get a second yellow there. Well, that's what I was saying. I don't want him to get a second yellow for something silly like that. That's an avoidable, avoidable, you know, the disciplinary reaction. He doesn't need that. That's certainly what Scott Morrison was arguing on the near side. Right. But Lamelli, right back into the run of play. It's another player on this 1904 roster that's the all-time assist leader at his respective school, UC Riverside. And here he is dueling with Jackson. So Chattanooga readying Cameron Woodfin to come on as a substitute pretty soon. We thought we might see Cam Woodfin. He's made his impact as a sub since that return from injury. What kind of impact is that for the former ETSU Buccaneer? Oh, it's what Cam always brings to a game, which is speed and uh, attacking and just a generally positive attitude that makes the other players respond as well. So uh, Cam will certainly make a difference. Let's see who he's going to replace. He's getting ready. Woodfin's made his way to midfield. Chattanooga will take this free kick. Not quite ready yet, but he'll be on in the moment. So let's see what Chattanooga make of this. No lot. That was rather an easy catch for the Frost in there in the goal of San Diego. Straight to Robertson. Spielman. So it looks like the substitution would fit and replace Alec McKinley as a attacking midfielder with Alec McKinley on that yellow card. Obviously, Coach Fuller doesn't want to take a chance and pick up a second one. And uh, being a man down, so Alec will come off. Here we go. 31 coming off, 22. Cam Woodfin coming off. First change of the game by Peter Fuller in the 72nd minute. We just saw McKinley. You could argue lucky not to get that second yellow. Peter Fuller is going to go ahead and avoid that right now, bringing on Cameron Woodfin. Yeah, good game management there. We've seen that in so many pro teams, and uh, for some reason, one player gets the red mist and just keeps picking up fouls and cautions, and before you know it, you're a man down. We saw it in this morning's soccer play at uh, the Premier League in Britain, and some red cards there. The same player just being careless, making some sloppy tackles, and suddenly the team's really affected by being down now. A Haygood Farm substitution by Chattanooga. Looking for alternative recovery methods that ensure you achieve the good and healthy life you deserve? Contact Haygood Farms, hand cultivated in Tennessee. So Woodfin on, McKinley off. One change per side. How does that alter things here? With less than 20 minutes to go, plus stoppage time. Two teams. In desperate need of three points tonight. Well, Tony Chattanooga's substitution was a planned one. Uh, San Diego's was not. Robertson does well to cut off the quick throw in. He had Apple on streaming down the right side. Yeah, very good play. So Cam Wolfen's going to slide up alongside Juan Hernandez in the midfield, in the attacking midfielders, and uh, that should give him a good solid base for attacking. Certainly a more direct player. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
All in, too much behind it from Robertson. Yeah, too much, not for sure. So, so what can a guy who you've seen play as a wing back, play as the 10, drop a little deeper, a versatile player right. for Chattanooga, an old Hickory, Tennessee native, only 25. He's a guy that Peter Fuller believes can move past this level. Yeah, I think so too. We've seen Cam develop at Chattanooga SC over the last couple of years, and uh, he's really come on and improved his game. And I think he has a lot more potential in him, a lot more playing years ahead. Um, and yeah, maybe we'll play the bigger team. And if so, that's great. Not tonight. I need him here <laughs> for this game. Certainly can count on having him for the next 17 or so minutes. That's fine. That's what I want. <laughs> How much of an impact will it have as 1904 wins a free kick and it's another San Diego player down on the ground? And I believe that's Lomelli again. The it is. second time we've seen yeah. him down and in pain. Trainers coming on again. Lomelli getting a second knock. Meanwhile, San Diego getting uh, Benito ready to come on. Number 21, Benito is a midfielder. Probably just to freshen up the midfield. And he may be able to replace Lamelli if uh, this happened, if it's too, too much from his, the, the foul. And it's nothing really, it's just a slight collision. Unless he landed badly on, uh, on one side, but it wasn't really a, anything more than a slight bump. So no foul being called, just uh, another collision. And it's up and about. I think it was a bad fall. It's a bad landing. Because he's he's walking it off, but yeah. We ain't gone down hard on his knee the way he's walking. Well, there will be a free kick here. So the foul was on Richard Dixon. And it slightly clipped him. It wasn't really a malicious tackle. Benito yep. limping off yeah, helped out by a trainer and it looks as though 1904 will have to make a second change I think they will have to bring on Benito is getting ready hasn't approached midfield yet and now here he comes yeah so he'll be coming on the moment at the halfway line We'll see if they let them take this yeah. free kick first. They have to be 10 man down first before they uh, bring him on with the referee signals. 76 minute, they'll allow him to come on. Okay, so not really a normal substitution there. Let's let him come on the field without going to the halfway line and getting the referee's attention, but oh well. Shot straight from the free kick by Strong, and Reddington watches it skip over the goal line. So Benito comes in, a 26-year-old, another local player from San Diego, to replace Lamelli. Hmm. And in the score line, that could affect what happens here. Maryland Bobcats has equalized against New Amsterdam. It is 1-1. Bobcats, six in the table on eight points. Chattanooga, eighth on six points. With an opportunity to jump the Bobcats. Now here's Kazak with a chance to bring it in. Kazak straight oh. into Jackson, who just couldn't get it turned around and faced up on the net. Oh, wow. Great cross. Jackson on the end of it. Just could not get the finish off to get it behind Austin for the goal. 77th minute. It was uh, much better from Chattanooga. And the bulk of the danger has come down that left side, hasn't it, behind James Kasak? It has. James Kasak is back in back on form again. And that's what we want to see. Free kick here. Yellow and card will be shown. Yellow card. That's Tate Robertson. Tate Robertson picks up another a yellow. Second one for Chattanooga of the night. So Robertson booked, got foul vision. Kaeperman, White, and McGarvey Eye Care can help with that. First one was McKinley. He's been taken off since. This portion of the broadcast on 11 Sports tonight is brought to you by Freebets for the final section of the game. Let's see that again. I want to see that shot again if we can put a nickel in the Wayback Machine. Here it comes. 
is Jackson yeah, just slightly too high for him to get the connection. Loose Reddington ball. has contact in the box and wins the free kick. In San Diego looking dangerous after these set pieces. They can see the clock as well as everybody else can. They know their time is running away for them to get something out of this. Are you surprised we've only seen one change so far from Peter Fink? I am actually. Usually he makes a few more than this. After the hour mark, he starts feeding in fresh players every five to ten minutes. And uh, just the one so far. And probably a tactical one so that McKinley doesn't pick up a second yellow card. But he has goal scorers on the bench. He's got uh, Brian Beamant on the bench. And uh, Topher Marshall and Ryan Marcano who can all come on and make a difference. I'm surprised he hasn't let one of them come on and... Uh, get some playing time another foul well, that number has certainly gone up here in the second half yep. Daniel Jackson coming in hard on Cutler there 11 fouls committed by Chattanooga eight by 1904 that number was six six yeah the early goings of this second half as we've hit the 80th minute here in Finley Stadium. Eighth and ninth place teams on the table consisting of 10. And Peter Fuller talked about it. This is a turning point in Chattanooga's season. Will they let bad results stack up against each other? Or will they be able to pivot here we, at home? We would say the same thing about San Diego. That right. Bad results stack up and both teams want to break that and uh, be on the winning side at the end of the game tonight. So Chattanooga, it's been about failing to create and finish those chances in the final yeah. third for 1904. It's been about defending as yes. another free kick given to yeah. 1904 here. Boos start to rain down from the Chattanooga supporters. It's like the, yeah, they're booing the San Diego players going down very easily under what are fairly normal challenges. It looks like... Uh, I think that was Her Herlo going down. That's yeah, Matthew Herlo walking 23, off. yeah. But none of these are particularly malicious challenges. They're just going down fairly easily. Reddington has it cleaned up. Good, solid goalkeeper. Alec Reddington read that all the way in and pulled it straight to his chest with no problems. And he's distributed it well to Tate Robertson. Now Chattanooga's turn to break. Robertson's worked his way much more central here as this game has gone on. Started out in that right wing back role. Woodfin. I'm sorry, Juan Hernandez on the ball. Could be numbers here for 1904. Herlow's making the central run. They opt to go right side to Schneider. Apollon. Can't get to it on the goal line. Kazak guides it out, and uh, that's a Chattanooga goal kick. But again, San Diego looking dangerous and uh, a fairly positive attack there that could have turned into something nasty for Chattanooga. Rain continues to fall at Finley Stadium. It's been that way all day here across mm -hmm. the state. I woke up in Nashville this morning to pouring rain outside my window. It didn't stop on my drive over, and here it comes at 9.15 Eastern time. It's still coming down. The skies are, are clear, but rain is not foggy or stormy. It's just that steady rain from the storm of the Gulf that's made its way up here. Hernandez on the tackle. Well, that prompts something here from Chattanooga. As it's turned up field by Nagelstadt. As Kasak on his left side, he's dispossessed. Just trying to win it back in the corner. Here comes 1904. It's a three on two opportunity for the visitors. Surging down centrally is Samora. Right side, Apollon. Cuts in on his left foot. Trying to square up the shot. Back on his left foot. This is Herlow. It's deflected off of Spielman, still in play. Good defending from Chattanooga. They shut them down and didn't give him a chance to get the shot away. And they turned and dived and twisted and could not do it. So good defending from Chattanooga. It was a big opportunity there. Absolutely. Here's Dedun. 
It's a good move to get around Hernandez, but cut off by Dixon. Richard Dixon, a lot of cleanup effort on the night. Which is what he always does in every game. He is the cleanup man, and we're glad he is too. Now, Chattanooga have substitute coming on. Just like Cutler Coleman, number 13, getting ready to come on. Let's see who he replaces. They put him on the striking role. He may replace Hernandez. We'll see if I'm right. Robertson. Will be Juan Hernandez okay. that will make way for Coleman once we find a stoppage. That's uh, a fairly usual substitution at this point of the game. Jackson was offside, and it wasn't particularly close there. It was. I've seen Coach Will make that substitution before, so this is. Uh, yep. Here we go. You're right. Juan Hernandez comes off. Cut the Coleman number 13 comes on. Fresh legs. Someone who can. Uh, Make a difference to a game with his speed. Another Haygood Farm substitution with about six minutes plus stoppage time to go. Both teams have had multiple captains on the night. Ozzy Ramos came off injured for Stumptown, had to give up the armband, and now Hernandez comes off, and he surrenders it as well to Richard Dixon. And in comes Cutler Coleman, the Winter Park Florida native. The guy who joined this team midway through 2020 won over this coaching staff with a six-week trial and has stuck around ever since. No goals yet on the season. Can he be the spark Chattanooga needs? Well, that's what Peter Fuller thinks. So uh, let's see if he's right. Let's say we still have about 10 minutes to play to go because there's a lot of extra time to add on after those injuries and stoppages. Injuries, fouls have certainly made this half disjointed at several points. That's, that's too long. Goes out for a chat and a goal kick. Yeah, I think we have at least 10 minutes to play to carry on, so I don't pay too much attention to the clock right now. We aren't uh, at the end of the game just yet. Well, they haven't been in this situation yet this season where they found those late heroics, right? You had that first uh -huh. win against Stumptown where right. they did create some stuff late in that game, came away with a two-goal win and then a dominant 3-0 win over Maryland Bobcats. Those are the two wins on the season, but can well, they create that moment of magic here in the final moments that they've done so many times at Finley Stadium, just not quite this fall season? Not quite this fall season. They did in San Diego in June when we the game there, the one-all draw they had, they did score in the 89th minute when Ian McGrath got the goal. Are we in for a repetition of that? Another 89th minute scorcher. That was a draw the last time these two teams met in June. It's a quality turn by Hurlow. Shows off some speed against Sean Russell, who does catch up to him. Matthew Hurlow trying to dice his way around the Chattanooga defender. He does so well. De Dune has a heavy touch. That's a great ball to Jackson. And here comes Daniel Jackson. 1904 has defensive numbers. Jackson has to hold it up. And he finds Hofstadter, who guides it to his left for Nagelstadt. Marcus Nagelstadt cuts inside. Nobody's there. Except for Shandon Wright. Tries to go through two many defenders, goes through a couple, but can't go through the third. Brian Bement, the next Chattanooga player to come on. It's the third Haygood Farms change of the night for Peter Fuller. He'll replace Daniel Jackson. Suddenly having a rash of substitutions. So Brian Bement coming on for that right wing slot. With fresh legs and again a proven striker. A little late in the game. I would have liked to see him come about 10 minutes before now, but I'm not the coach. <laughs> That's three changes for CFC, two in the last three minutes. 1904 has only made two, both of them prompted by injuries. They arrived here with only five options on the bench. And one of those is the goalkeeper, so we got only four. That's right. Robertson. Woodfin. Going diagonal. Oh, that's a great ball. It's deflected to the top of the box. Nagelstadt yes! buries it. Yes, at last. Marcus Nagelstadt saves the night. Again, what a great goal. In the 88th minute. And the crowd is going berserk down there. Absolutely berserk. 
Who else but Marcus Nagelstad? Second goal on the season, was injured for so much of it. But when he sees the field, he finds the back of the net. And Chattanooga leads 1904 at home. At last, let's see that again, because that was a great goal. Just watch this. Just a clean strike straight into the corner. Lovely goal right past Austin. And not much that uh, San Diego can, can do after that. They made us wait, didn't they, Lucas? My goodness, they made us wait. <laughs> And a fortunate bounce, wasn't it? Cutler Coleman made the play down the right mm -hmm. flank, and it deflects to Nagelstadt along the 18, and he makes no mistake. Rifling it into the bottom left corner of Austin Rogers' goal, and Chattanooga minutes away from a massive three points that would end a three-game skid for the eighth-place team That's right. in the Nisa table. there on Woodfin. No. That Chattanooga FC that. goal brought to you by Hojizio Grill. Text GOAL to 423-445-1002 for a chance to win a full Hojizio at the Brazilian Steakhouse here in town. Another wow. change coming for 1904. Matt Hurlow coming off, the striker. And Daniel Madrigal, number three, is a midfielder. So Hurlow, who's provided one goal for 1904 this season, makes way. Let's see if the fresh legs can make a difference. San Diego, but Chattanooga are going to hang on to this. Kasak settles it. Robertson. Chattanooga wouldn't throw there. We've almost played the full 90. The rain's come back hard, but uh, none of the fans in the stadium want to leave. They want to see Chattanooga win again. I know you at home do as well. Seven minutes of extra time, folks. Seven minutes. <laughs> There's going to be plenty of action to come yet. Well, we thought it would be... A substantial amount. Simon, I, certainly I would have said five or so, but my goodness, seven minutes. All the stoppages, the fouls, the injuries, the cards. Yep. Two of them given to Chattanooga. One to 1904, though that was in the first half. Yeah, there's been a whole lot of stoppages. That's a lovely ball, too. And here's Nagelstadt again. Is he going to go for a second? No, he's dispossessed. Tried to split defenders there. A little bit ambitious. And... Uh, Free kick coming for CFC. And Clark a yellow shown. card <laughs> for that, that one. Edward Benito. Benito gets the yellow for the foul. Another Kaplan White and McGarvey yellow. Yeah, knocks out Kazak there. Okay, there's quite a few knocks. He had a little bruises tomorrow morning. He wakes up after all that lot. Chattanooga taking the time over the free kick, as you would expect. Robertson will send it in. Chattanooga looking for that insurance goal to build off the 88th minute goal. And Bement Bim has the deflection and the follow-up. The offside flag is up. Two chances there, but couldn't make either of them count. And uh, San Diego getting the ball back into play quickly. Plenty of time for 1904 to try and find an equalizer. Less than two minutes of the seven given have been played. Need more time for your business? Contact HHM for all of your accounting needs. Richard Dixon, turning clearance yep. out into the far side. Best option there was to give away the throw. He was uh, covered on both sides by San Diego attackers. Good intelligent play that. The rain picks up almost on cue after the Chattanooga goal. 93rd minute. Lofted in. Multiple CFC defenders there as Reddington punches it away. Hofstadter looking to clear it. Ball still in the box. And it's thumped away. Chattanooga have a player down in the box. Play continues. Looks like... Uh, Coleman, I think. And that's Robertson. No, Robertson. Limps away from the action. This is Apollon. 
He approaches Robertson. Just picked himself off the turf, shaken up. That's in for Benito. Robertson's the only one there to get it away, and he does. Still clearly bothered by something on that lower right leg. Peter Fuller's made three changes. He has options on the bench. Yeah. Well, he's already used up his three windows. I don't think he'll want to. So yeah. no more changes Just allowed right. for either right. team. Right. Now here's Kazak. See if he's got any energy left in those legs. He's been running all night like a steam train. Let's see what he's got. Streaming down the left channel, James Kazak will opt to milk some time here. Look at Cuts that. it back. Great skill. And he wins the free kick. And the referee has... Has he caught? I think he's blown the whistle. After... He has after four minutes. That's the final whistle. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting the play to go on a bit longer, but not complaining. Chattanooga takes three points. I think the... Uh, well, now hang on. Now... Scott Morrison is on the field. And rightfully so. Seven minutes of stoppage time were given. Seven the minutes. The full-time whistle was blown after four. Seven minutes was not played. Scott Morrison furious from the 1904 sideline. And now referees are discussing. I don't know if there was some confusion, Simon, if Alexander Zelyaskov knew how much stoppage time was right. shown. I don't think he was because he's played four minutes and that's not what we expect to play. So let's not close the book on this match Wait yet. Wait and see, folks. Don't turn off. Lots more drama. And how is he going to restart the game after calling it in the middle of a play? He's got Coach Fuller, Coach Morrison surrounding him, plus the players. Chattanooga players working real, their way into real the situation. real test for a referee to get control of this situation. You can see Nagelstadt and Apollon. It's a situation of his own making. So, how's he going to get out of this one? That was supposed to be seven minutes. And there's nowhere near, as you can see from the clock on the screen. But, once the whistle's blown, that's usually it under the rules that we play under in North American soccer. I have to say, I have <laughs> never seen this happen, whether watching or broadcasting a soccer game, where the stoppage time given is cut off it's a, a good three minutes before it's, it expires. It's a little different. I have seen it when there's been a team that's been like six or seven goals up, and it's like, you call it the slaughter ball here in America, but I haven't seen this during normal play. This is very unusual. So, officials discussing Alexander Zelyaskov, the center referee tonight, Eduardo Chavez, Jordan Morris, and Ronald Ware, the fourth official, part of his team. Well, ultimately, and he calls over the fourth official, Ronald Ware, now. And, yeah. of course, Ware, the one who showed the he stoppage showed, time of seven minutes. And we saw that. So, unless there was a miscommunication of stoppage time, where Zelyaskov intended for it to be four and Ware showed the wrong number, right. I don't know what else could be happening here. There is some confusion. What is going on? Are they going to resume play? And if so, there's going to be a whole lot more than 97 Ooh, minutes played in this yes, game. Yes, there is. This is going to be a late night. <laughs> the difference right now, a Marcus Nagelstad 88th minute goal, his second of the season, oh. bearing a deflection at the top of the box. Well, what is the referee doing? Is he going to have a drop ball to restart? I mean, there are players, substitutes on the field, coaches on the field. The, the officials need to get a grip on this because it's going to run out of control very fast. Simon, now the way Celia Scott oh, is holding out a, the ball, I think we if may you look in front far. of the uh, San Diego bench, there's a words being exchanged with Morrison and the coaches and Richard Dixon and the other players having words. Well, this has the potential to spiral this could get here. really bad if they don't get a grip on this fast. Lorenzen talking to Richard Dixon. No, Sean Russell, sorry. But, uh, this is an unusual situation, folks. Are they going to play the rest of the game, or are they going to spend the rest of the night talking about it? Zelyaskov still chatting now with Tate Robertson. <laughs> several 1904 <laughs> players in the mix. You know, we say things about the referees saying, you know, they don't know what they're doing. I mean, I hate to say it, but he doesn't know what he's doing, does he? Well, th this. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I really wish we could explain this better. This I wish has we could. to be some form of miscommunication. I wish we could give you a better explanation, folks. It's awfully confusing. There's There cannot be a scenario where the official just decides, no, I don't want to play these next they three minutes. They don't have right? the choice. It simply yeah, has to be set. a miscommunication right. between the yeah. center referee, Zellius and yeah. the fourth official, Ronald Correct. Ware. Absolutely. And why don't just say, I made a mistake? Resuming the drop ball. And the way he's holding the ball here on that part of the field where there was yeah. a foul called. Right. It looks like play will resume here. But he needs to get the players reset and the coaching staff off the field. And, and we're, we're resuming. back underway. Okay. So uh, here we go, folks. <laughs> the game is not over. And here comes 1904. <laughs> now, this could be a potentially dangerous situation for Chattanooga here. And the ball goes out of play for a Chattanooga throw-in. So how do you collect yourself if you're CFC? Really? How do you resume and mentally? We, we've stopped our clock here on the broadcast. Right. So 97 okay. minutes as it expires on your screen will Hello. likely be how Zelyaskov has it kept on the field. It may go to 100 minutes at this point. We'll see. It certainly is not absolute. What a bizarre ending to this very critical game for both of these teams. <laughs> That's very unusual. Okay. Back to play. So, 19.04. Yeah, it's a second, second chance there, which they weren't expecting. Well, they'll certainly feel like they've been given a whole new opportunity here to try and find an equalizer. Ball into the box. It's in front of Reddington, and it's buried into the back Barry of the net. Goal. That's the equalizer in the 95th minute. Oh, my. More drama. Absolute chaos at you. Finley Stadium. Not to see you got that one. I think it was 21. It looked like Edward Benito. We'll get a look at the replay I in a moment. it was Benito. Let's see that again. This is crazy. What a game. We've bought you some wild games, folks. This isn't just another one. This is absolutely crazy. Let's see that again. I think it's Benito. The bounce favors him, and he just yeah, puts it past Reddington. And just like Chattanooga's goal, that's crazy. it's off of a deflection, and it's Edward Benito. His first goal of the 2021 season. We are squared away one-to-one. -one. Seven minutes of stoppage time were given at the 90-minute mark. After three were played, Alexander Zelyaskov blew the final whistle after much discussion with players and officials. They resumed play, and 1904 jumped all over the opportunity. They certainly did, and who can blame them? But now Chattanooga have to pick themselves up and uh, get back into action again. Free kick to Chattanooga. Now, the wild card here is we believe there will be another minute of stoppage time at minimum to 97. But the truth is, Simon, we have no idea we don't what Zellius Lucas. Clock's, clock we looks do like not right know. <laughs> I wonder if he does, but we certainly don't. So we'll bring you every minute of play, folks. Don't worry. We aren't going to go to a commercial break and cut you off. But, so uh, ev every moment wow. precious here <laughs> as both teams look for three points. Robertson sure. floats it in. That's Spielman squaring it across, and nobody's there for the final product. Offside flag was up. 97th minute. I've seen some bizarre finishes in this beautiful game, but not like this. I have too. I've seen some strange things at Finley Stage. And this goes in the record books alongside some of those very odd things, along with the um, the three penalty kicks being retaken and all the other events in Chattanooga's history. Chattanooga on the back of a three-game slide. 1904 has um, lost four in a row, and this one will end in a 1-1 draw. Now the referee has blown the whistle. Is this the final whistle, Lucas? And now Let's Chatt not be certain. Hold on. It may not be the final right. whistle. We've played this game before. <laughs>